From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Thursday, January 13th, 2022. EU planning supply chain attack simulations. Bloomberg sources say the EU will launch a large-scale simulation of cyber attacks against multiple member states this week. The simulation will go on for six weeks and include some knock-on socioeconomic impacts in other states, as well as look at how participants handle public communication and diplomatic responses. Documents for the simulation say the EU doesn't currently have a framework for coordinating a joint response to a major attack on its supply chain. The simulation will escalate to something that would qualify as an armed aggression under the United States Charter and will be modeled on recent attacks or likely near-future scenarios. Tell you the past ransomware returns. A new report from CrowdStrike details the return of the ransomware, which emerged last month as part of attacks exploiting Log4Shell. The ransomware is now Golang compiled. This has had two impacts. The smaller dependency library means there's less communication with C2 servers, reducing detection rates. It also features 85% code similarity between Linux and Windows samples, meaning it took very little adjustment to give it cross-platform support. It also uses a new encryption scheme with no free decryptor currently available. No macOS samples have been spotted, but could be possible thanks to the versatility of Golang. A look at Senate confirmations for cyber positions. The U.S. Senate recently voted 60-31 to 31 to approve President Biden's nomination of Alan Davidson to head the National Telecommunications and Information Administration this week. NTIA will manage distribution of the $48 billion of infrastructure spending on broadband deployment, so it's a big deal. However, other agencies with major cyber oversight are in limbo over personnel, with nominated commissioners for the FTC and FCC both awaiting votes. Currently, both bodies are largely stuck in partisan splits, putting major privacy and information security efforts on hold. Magnibber ransomware found using signed certificates. Researchers at the Korea cybersecurity company OnLab published a report showing the ransomware group is using Windows application package files signed with valid certificates. These are used to insert malware that appears as a Chrome or Edge browser update. Victims must first visit a malicious website where they receive an alert to update their browser manually and provide the signed malicious file. Installing this immediately begins the encryption process, so it's not believed to be part of a double extortion scheme. It's unclear how Magnibber is getting people to use these malicious URLs, but phishing seems the most likely vector. And now a word from our sponsor, BlackBerry. With ransomware attacks like Revil, Darkside, Conti, and recently Log4Shell, how confident are you in your cyber solution to prevent threats today and into the future? With BlackBerry's prevention-first endpoint security, we prevent breaches versus responding to and mitigating future attacks. With our Silence artificial intelligence, threats are detected and prevented pre-execution. Traditional AV vendors can't do this. Get prevention-first protection to keep your data and organization safe. Learn more at BlackBerry.com. Bug alerts as a phone service. Cybersecurity professionals are often forced to follow Twitter accounts to stay on top of cybersecurity developments in a timely fashion, but finding the signal and all that noise can be time-consuming or at least tedious. Product manager Matt Sullivan is trying to get around that with Bug Alert, a crowdsourced site that will phone you when there's a relevant vulnerability discovered. They'll also send you an SMS. Bug Alert uses a geographically dispersed group of vetted volunteers who review incoming bug reports on Twitter and other sources and then send push alerts to registered users. You can even use the telephone option to play a text-to-speech version for a vulnerability alert. Most of the service users currently opt for SMS. Sullivan argues the service is needed as relying on CVE number registrations is too slow. FTC antitrust suit against Meta cleared to proceed. U.S. District Judge James Boasberg ruled that the Federal Trade Commission can proceed with its antitrust lawsuit against Meta after the company filed a motion to dismiss it. The FTC's initial case was found lacking in evidence, but the judge invited the agency to refile it, saying the core theory of the lawsuit is unchanged, just backed by more robust evidence this time around. In the ruling, the judge cleared the FTC to proceed with its claims that Meta's strategy with competition was to buy and bury them, but did not invite the agency to refile its claims of Meta's stifling competition by restricting access to its APIs. The company, then called Facebook, dropped those API policies back in 2018 and did not enforce them since 2013. Dorsey proposes Bitcoin Legal Defense Fund. The Block Inc. CEO proposed creating the fund for developers of the cryptocurrency on the BitDev mailing list. The post was co-signed by ChairCode Labs co-founder Alex Morcos and Martin White. Dorsey said the fund was needed to provide legal support for the community, currently facing multi-front litigation and threats. 
The fund is currently not looking to raise outside capital and is free and voluntary for developers. The fund's first activity will be defending a lawsuit targeting Bitcoin developers related back to the theft of cryptocurrency from the Mt. Gox hack. Mozilla expands total cookie protection. The browser maker is adding its total cookie protection feature to its lightweight Firefox Focus mobile browser on Android. This feature came to the desktop Firefox browser back in February 2021. Total cookie protection is designed to prevent cross-site tracking by separating cookies into separate logical jars, keeping browser data away from different sites. This is part of Mozilla's concerted effort to add tracking protections, automatically blocking cookies from known trackers, and auto-blocking browser fingerprinting scripts back in 2020. While cybersecurity headlines is done for today, remember, we've got lots of amazing shows available from the CISO series. This week's episode of Defense in Depth digs into making cybersecurity faster and more responsive. In cybersecurity, knowing is a third of the battle, responding is another third. The final piece is responding quickly. The episode digs into how to get meaningfully faster with responding to cyber threats in an increasingly complex landscape. Check it out in your favorite podcast app or just head on over to CISOseries.com. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.